Hi everyone, so we're going to continue with our nervous system here. We can see we're going to start with our central nervous system, which we know is made up of our brain and our spinal cord. So within our brain, there's a couple different sections that we're going to be talking about. So we see our brain stem, which is made up of our medulla, pons, and midbrain. So if we look over here, we can see all of this here encompasses our brain stem, which is a pretty small area within our brain. We also see that part of our brain is called the diacephalon, which includes the thalamus and our hypothalamus, which is right here. Hypothalamus is this little region here, and our thalamus is back here a little bit. Then we see our cerebellum, which kind of is this little ball-like structure that's found on the back of our brain here. And then finally, our cerebrum, which is what we're probably most familiar with when we see it. This is going to be where we see all of these little wrinkles or um, gyres of our brain. And then our spinal cord, we can see here, this is a cross section. We see mostly white matter on the outside and a lot of gray matter on the inside, which is our nice little butterfly shape over here where it's the opposite for our brain. We see a lot of our gray matter on the outside of our brain and more of our white matter on the inside. So let's start with our meninges. Meninges are three coverings around the brain and spinal cord that are going to help cushion, protect, and nourish. And these end up being really important um, and we'll see that with our image at the end. So first, our dura mater is gonna be the outermost layer, and it's very, very tough. It also tends to be a little bit thicker than the other two layers. Our arachnoid matter is going to be our middle layer. It's going to adhere to the dura, and it has web-like attachments to our innermost layer. So it allows some space between our arachnoid mater and our next layer, which is called our pia mater, which is a very thin, transparent, but tough layer here. And it's going to cover the entire brain following into its crevices or gears, and it covers our spinal cord. So this is directly touching our brain here. So if we were able to do a dissection, we would see that we can't really separate the pia mater from our actual brain tissue because it is so closely adhered to both the brain and the spinal cord. Another thing that we're gonna see is cerebral spinal fluid. And this is just some fluid that flows through our subarachnoid space, which is between our arachnoid and our pia mater because of those web-like attachments. But we're also going to see that it's able to run around our spinal cord and it runs through our brain as well. And some of its functions is going to be able to buffer, so it allows um, some movement of materials. We're also going to see that it nourishes and detoxifies all the um, stuff that we're going to find within our brain and spinal cord. Very, very important uh, fluid here. So let's take a look at these different separations. Up here we can see our slightly thicker layer of our dura, very, very tough for those protection coverings. Below, a little bit darker of a green, is our arachnoid mater. And we can see some of these web-like projections that are coming down. Um, and then this really thin red layer right here that is our pia mater, and I want you to notice how it comes down into these gears of our brain. So our arachnoid and our dura kind of just make a covering over where our pia actually physically touches every part of our brain here. Um, another thing I want you to notice is that these veins are coming down into our gears as well um, to help nourish our brain with blood and oxygen. Um, we're also going to see that that subarachnoid, um, the cerebral spinal fluid is going to be able to flow between those. And it's really important that our brain have all these gears because it allows more surface area to be within our brain. 
um, which allows more connections to be made. So let's talk about some of our regions of the brain. So our cerebellum, if we remember, is that kind of ball-looking structure on the back of our brain. And it's involved of coordination of movement and aspects of motor learning. So if you think about just fine motor movements and things like that, speaking, moving our lips, holding a pencil, walking, all those different things are going to be controlled in our cerebellum. Our next region is our cerebrum which remember that's going to be the region you're probably most familiar with where we see all of those gyres. Um, it's definitely the largest part of your brain and that controls all of your conscious activity. So that's going to include perception, emotions, thoughts, planning, all of those things that we are able to do with a higher level of thinking uh, in comparison to animals. Um, so seeing a picture and being able to perceive some sort of image from that, some emotion from that, being able to have conscious thoughts and be able to act on those thoughts, all of that different processing is going to happen within our cerebrum. Our next part is our thalamus. Our thalamus and our hypothalamus is going to be the really important parts of our brain. So our thalamus is our brain switchboard it filters and relays all the information that we get within our brain regions so if we get a picture in so if we're looking at something and we want to see that image it's going to come through the thalamus and send it to the place in the brain that's going to be able to analyze those images our hypothalamus has quite a few regulations so it's regulating all activities in our internal organs and also monitoring that autonomic nervous system. So if we remember our autonomic nervous system is again controlling our internal organs. So it's really telling us what's happening within our body rather than what's happening on the outside that we're trying to perceive. So it's also controlling our pituitary gland which has a lot to do with what's happening again on the inside of its body and it controls that by using its hormones. It's also gonna help regulate sleep and appetite. So lots of functions here with our thalamus and hypothalamus. If we remember, those are part of our diencephalon. Our brainstem is made up of a couple different regions as well, our medulla, pons, and midbrain, and these are all responsible for involuntary responses. And it also connects information between the spine and our upper brain. So if we think about involuntary responses, some of those involuntary responses might be blinking, digestion, breathing, our regulation of our heartbeat. So all of those different vital um, activities that we need to survive that we don't think about are going to happen in our brainstem. And more specifically within our medulla, we're going to see vital reflexes like, again, our heartbeat and respiration or breathing. So let's take a look at all of these different places. So if we see our cerebellum, again located here, kind of looking like a ball-like structure, we can see our entire brainstem here coming all the way down. Here's our brainstem, our pons, medulla, where we're going to see those vital connections, and our midbrain up here. Our thalamus and hypothalamus in this nice blue color. Um, again, that little region controlling much of what we do. And then we also see our cerebrum, which is going to be all of this area here, which contains all of those different gyres and things like that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We're going to deep, dig deeper into this anatomy and physiology of our brain.